pass over. And so I'm wondering if you have ever heard of something like that or seen anything like that and if it would show up in the um, MRI imaging. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of the experiments we, we usually do to test the scanner is a finger tapping experiment. And when we do finger tapping on off, we get activation and a lot of times we'll, we'll get bilateral activation, but it will be stronger on the contralateral hemisphere. But I, I can understand that there could be some people that have homolateral activation. But the usual case, the usual brain, is for contralateral activation. If you do your right hand, you usually get left-sided activation. That's the usual case. Right. Uh, Todd, uh, do you uh, uh, think that the uh, setup of your EEG experiment, where you had all your monitoring equipment directly in line in between the sender and receiver may have uh, not given you such a good a results as if they'd have been separate in a different way? Yeah, are you asking because they're in line or? Yeah, or right next, you're, you know, you're, the sender and the receiver are on the same straight line as, as your electronic monitoring equipment. Right. Is that, is that true? Uh, that was pretty much true. They were three rooms in a row. So they were three rooms uh, in a row. But there was quite a, bit, a big distance between the, the, so that, in that diagram, they looked close together, but there was quite a big distance. Those were pretty big rooms that there were in between them. I wonder if you might have any uh, speculation or explanation, perhaps, why uh, I believe the Hawaiian uh, situation was healers, why there would be a strong response or a noticeable response in the deep in the optical region of the brain? So that's a good question. Why in the optical region? Uh, one of my explanations is that there's some imagery involved. So, so maybe what's happening is that the healers are invoking an imagery process in the receiver. So, so the, the truth is, in normal visual experiments, if a human will picture an event and just make an image in his mind, the brain activates as if he's really seeing the picture. So, so it's a very close coupling in the brain between reality and just thinking about a picture. So if you think of a face, if you think of a face, you'll activate the fusiform as if you were really looking at a face, even though you're just thinking about a face. So I think it's the imagery that's being evoked by the uh, healer. That's one of my theories. I'm curious how the sender identifies the receiver. Uh, not, a, not just in your talk, but in previous ones as well, but uh, in some cases, clearly, you have them connected by circuitry. In other cases, they're in separate rooms. So I can imagine the sender would know the person's name, perhaps, would know the location, might be thinking geospatially as to the, oh, a person located there, or might be thinking, oh, Fred. What, what is the sender doing mentally to identify the receiver? Well, that's a good question. Before they started the experiment, we had the healer spend some time with the sender. So they, they, they were in, they spent some time together, you know, getting to know each other, and so that, so that the sender really did have a good impression about who the sender, the receiver was. So they did spend some time together uh, before they separated. But we've done it both ways. If the sender doesn't know the receiver, it, it doesn't work as well. It, it almost doesn't work nearly as well as when the, send, the sender knows pretty well the receiver. Does that answer your question? Uh, oh. Sorry, I, uh, I'm, I'm having a bit of deja vu here and wishing I could get at my uh, reference library because I seem to remember, but I'm blocking on details, that quite recently there's been another fMRI study that uh, garnered some publicity for claiming to have refuted the whole ESP concept 
once and for all and showing no correlation between senders and, and receivers in an ESP task. Really? Um, Do you know who the author was? That's why I wish I could get at my li library to check. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I, I can picture an, an environment when nothing would work. You can sabotage the environment and make it so nothing works. I mean, several people here have mentioned that. The environment is very important in, in how you set up the experiment. And so I think that the environmental impact can influence how well the healer can send to the receiver. So I, I can understand how there could be a, a false uh, result. Uh, I'm curious in what way were the alpha waves linked? Do they have the same frequency? Do, were they synchronized or how, how did that work? The alpha waves were linked in the way that they differed between the flicker on state and the flicker off state. So we were comparing the alpha a amplitude between on and off. And, and that distance and that difference between those two states is what we use to correlate. The, Am does that, amplitude, okay. The amplitude of the alpha between the flicker on and the off state. Um, I had a question about the receivers. I mean, who were they? What were they told? Did they have a background of meditation, or they, were they involved with the healers, or were they just some people off the street that, that they grabbed? The receivers. The receivers. Yeah. The, the receivers were chosen, as far as I know, by the healer, but, but I, I'd have to ask Jeannie that, that, that question. I, I'm, I'm not entirely show, sure how they were chosen, but I do know that they... They did spend time with the healer before they went in the scanner. So, so that the healer did have a really good uh, relationship with them before they went into the scanner. And imaging then is sort of part of this healer's idea so they could be transmitted to the receiver if they talk to each other? Wait, what's your question? Well, if the healers are into imaging, then if they discuss, talked it over with the receivers, then that may help explain why it's, uh, you're seeing it in the imaging uh, part of the brain. Oh, I see what you mean. I, I see what you mean. Okay, I'm going to let yeah. him speak and then you're next. Because it's, a, it's almost important. Todd, that was a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I happen to have talked to Jeannie Ochterberg about uh, how those subjects were chosen. And uh, she says that uh, the healers were asked to recruit a subject with whom they had worked in the past uh, and had some sort of empathic emotional connection. Uh, and so the empathic component to the whole deal seems to be really crucial about what you found. And, right. and, and it seems to me that uh, these large-scale double-blind healing studies where you have typically strangers praying for strangers completely subvert one of the uh, necessary factors, uh, at least uh, in your study, f uh, for a successful study. Right. Uh, so it, that's probably uh, a great shortcoming of the double-blind randomized uh, yeah. study as it's done in, in, in many places. Right, that's so important for the healer and the receiver to, to have a good relationship and empathic, emotional type of connection. And uh, in the uh, follow-up study that you all did, I understand that that empathic bond simply wasn't there because these, uh, in the rerun of the study, the healers did not know the, uh, the uh, subjects. There was one where Jeannie did one where they didn't know each other. Yeah. Is and that not, right? Yeah. And, and so, that, that showed no so it significance. A, it was a flop. It was a flop. Yeah. So, so that makes sense to me why this other person got a negative result when the, if they didn't set it up, a good connection between the, the healer and the receiver. That's so crucial. And, and I know you do that with your work too, right? You, 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 may, you establish a good connection, right, in your work. Could you talk about the control uh, aspects of this on the first experiment? In other words, there was no, the sender um, 
would set up a connection 